Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. I've called this one the circuit cane because all of these lines connect together to create sort of circuits running over the top of a background pattern. And that was the look I was going for where you've got this surface image but you've also got a nice background pattern as well. With this particular one, I'll be using a pasta machine to create Skinner blends. However, if you don't have a pasta machine or if you don't like making Skinner blends, you can do this one by laying simple sheets of graduated colour on top of each other. And I'll tell you the colours I'm going to use. So if you don't want to do a Skinner blend, simply cut yourself sheets to the size and stack them and you'll get more or less the same effect for this one. And this one would make a good background veneer, but it also comes together nicely in smaller pieces, so you can create bits of jewellery, pendants, things like that if you wanted to. So let's start by looking at the equipment we need for today's session. Because all we're doing today is creating a cane, the equipment is fairly minimal and standard. I'm using a polymer clay blade, I often refer to this as a tissue blade, a craft knife, some form of polymer clay roller is handy, either a small one or a larger one, whichever you have to hand. To create grooves in the cane and also to put the slices of the veneer together, I'm using a small cable needle. This is a four millimeter one, but anything that would allow you just to move slices of the cane together or to create a, a groove about that size is perfect. When we put all the slices together in a veneer, and I'll show you how to do that later on in the tutorial, I'm going to use a stainless steel soap just to smooth over all the um, slices of cane. If you don't have one of these, however, you can just use the side of your roller instead or anything flat just to create a nice flat surface. And I'm also using about a six inch square of clear paper. This happens to be wax paper, but anything of the same type, tracing paper, baking paper, greaseproof paper, something that you can put down see through, but it will protect the clay as you smooth over the top. And as always, because we're going to be doing some measurements, I'm using a measuring sheet. This is one that's freely downloadable, and I get mine from www.printablepaper.net. This is the 4 to 1 square one, um, because I find it easy to work in inches, but you can also download centimetres if you prefer. And I've simply laminated mine so I can use it lots of times and cut down onto it without making the paper dirty from the polymer clay. I also use biodegradable wet wipes to clean my hands and equipment as I go along and just some paper tissues to dry off any wetness from the wet wipes. I will use a tile to work on and if I was going to bake I'd use a tile to bake on as well. And lastly I use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use to condition the clay and also to make thinner sheets depending on the sizes we want. If you don't have a pasta machine then simply get some stacks of cards, lay the same amount of cards on either side and then you can use your roller over the top to create the right thickness of clay for what we're planning to do for today's project. So that's it. Let's move on to the clay we now need. For today's project, I'm using Fimo Soft and I'm using this array of colours. For the main background bit, we're going to use a blend of four colours and I'm going for sunflower yellow, tangerine, Indian red and cherry red. And I've got half an ounce or 14 grams of each of these colours. To create our stripes, which create the circuit pattern in the cane, I'm going for the emerald and white and the peppermint and white and each of these blocks are about 10 grams or a third of an ounce so obviously I've got 20 grams effectively of the white or two thirds of an ounce of the white. And to create the little dark background and lines in between all of our pieces I'm going to use black and I've got one ounce or 28 grams of the black. And then when I put our pieces together I'm going to put them as a veneer to take thin slices. If that's what you want to do then you just need some form of scrap clay. There's probably about the same about an ounce, um, 28 grams of scrap clay and I'll put that through on quite a thin setting on the pasta machine. To create the cane I'm going to do a Skinner blend of one, two, three, four colours as the main background. A Skinner blend of those two and a Skinner blend of those two. But as I mentioned at the start, if you don't have a pasta machine or if you don't want to do Skinner blends, you can simply create sheets of these colours and just stack them together instead. And that's another option and works just as well for this particular cane. And you'd create a stack for the size that I'm going to tell you about and just make as bigger or as thick a piece as you can for the sizes I'm going to show you that we need when I do the Skinner blends. Mm -hmm. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is condition all the clay in all their separate amounts and colours and I'll condition it thoroughly starting with the lighter colour and working up through the others. If you're not sure how to condition clay or not sure why we condition clay I do have a video which I'll put a link to in the video description below with a few tips and techniques on how to condition polymer clay quickly particularly if you have a pasta machine. I'm going to put all the colours through on setting three and we'll start with these four colours and create a nice Skinner blend with those four. So to do the four-way Skinner blend I've put the yellow tangerine, the Indian red and the cherry red in that order. The end two I will cut down through diagonally and the middle two cut down straight. If you haven't done a Skinner blend before or if you're unsure how to do one I do have a video and I'll put a link to that in the description below with various tips on how to get good Skinner blends. All I'm doing with for now is just doubling these up so we've got two layers of each colour and then with the big side of the triangles down there put these across diagonally just patching any bits that come off and then we end up with the large side of that triangular piece that side. I'm going to give it a little bit of a roll just to make sure they stick together slightly and then I'm going to fold them up so that when I first put it through the pasta machine I haven't got all the lines that are going to spread apart because they're overlapping each other as they go. I'm going to pick up any odd bits in the darker colour because that won't show up when we do the Skinner blend and then I'll put it back through the pasta machine fold end first and if it cracks like this or if you've got big thick pieces then just pinch the ends to give yourself a bit of extra manoeuvring room in the pasta machine and to make it easier for the pasta machine and because we've now got four layers of setting number three I'm going to put this at least one setting higher setting number two on the pasta machine fold first and each time I put it through I'll collect it fold the bottom to top put it back through fold first until I have a nice blend from one side through to the other and I'll bring you back when I've got that blend done. Once your blend's complete we're going to chop it into strips and I want them to be probably about an inch and three quarters, not quite two inches wide for what we're planning to do. So about sort of um, four and a half centimetres. So I'm going to do this into three pieces. And just layer your pieces on top of each other. I'm going to pinch the end because we're going to put it back through that same setting on the pasta machine setting number two. Pinching the end makes it easier to go through the pasta machine and when I put it through I'm going to hold on to these ends to make sure that these don't spread out. Um, if you wanted to you could just give it a roll first to make it easier and I'll end up with a longer thinner strip. There we go and now I'm going to put it through my thinnest setting on the pasta machine so my pasta machine naught is thick and nine is thin so I'm going straight down to setting number nine however if you know your machine is one that chews up the clay when it goes down the lower settings just keep going down one setting at a time to get your thinnest usable setting but basically we just want a nice long strip and when I'm putting it through on a thin setting I always put it through the dark end first so that if there's any clay on your pasta machine that's going to be dirty it'll go on the dark end not the light end and I will also turn the handle a couple of times when I go down the settings just to release any clay that might have got stuck underneath the pasta machine. So I'll go and get that done and bring you back when we have our nice long thin strip. Okay there we go. So what I want to do this time I'm going to create quite a long blend so probably about two inches probably even slightly more two two and a half inches so what's that sort of five six centimeters something like that and just go backwards and forwards. And because of that, you don't get a very smooth reduction or smooth blend of the colours. You do sort of see the stripes, which is why if you'd rather not do the Skinner blend and just do, say, sheets of colour, you can do. So if you are going to do your sheets or blocks of colour, this is sort of the size you'd end up it, with it being. So I say sort of about two, two and a half inches um, by about one and three quarters across. I'm trying to keep it fairly oblong as I go, making sure I'm not creating or trapping any air between the layers or particularly in the folds. Wherever it finishes off, just let it finish off there. And I'll just push down the corners or on the edges slightly and perhaps just give it a little roll just to make sure I've got quite a nice flat oblong shape. 
So that is what we're looking for. And that's the first piece done. And you can see there what I mean about if you just had the stripes of colours instead, it'll be just as good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just put a layer of black on the bottom of that. So I've got the black that I'd already put through the pasta machine on setting number three. So I'm just going to lay that and it's going to go over against the dark side. So just chop yourself a piece that fits. I'm just going to press that on, make sure it's stuck firmly to the bottom. The size we need is three inches by two inches and um, because that means seven and a half centimeters I would suggest you work to eight centimeters by five centimeters if you're working in centimeters rather than inches um, but I want it to be slightly over that because we're going to chop it down and make it neat so I'm just going to roll first on the top in both directions trying to keep it as even as you can and then because you'll find if you only roll on the top the bottom sort of shrinks inwards or doesn't move and only the top does then turn it over and do the same on the other side and when you've got it so it's the right size place it over your measuring sheet and then chop it down so it is three by two inches or eight by five centimeters What I will often do is I will pull off or cut off the black on these pieces and then all the rest of the colours will mix up into quite a nice sort of um, lightish red colour and be used for another project. For the bits I've got left, I'm going to chop straight down the middle, so make it into two pieces, one inch height by three inches. And then we're going to chop this piece but not quite in half I want one piece to be slightly bigger than the other so our midpoint would be here so I'm at so I'm going to go just sort of halfway down the next square so that, that one sits just on top of that so if you're doing it in centimeters one would be four just over four centimeters one would be just under four centimeters so the next piece we're going to put on will be one inch and one quarter so that sits on top of there and then the last piece is going to be an inch and that sits on top of there giving us a nice sort of square pyramid shape now this piece we're going to use in a minute to put this one to one side and keep it safe and what we're going to do is we're going to level off and neaten off by creating a nice cut down the side just chopping off those edges to create a triangular side or a straight side to our triangular piece so it's going to be triangular in a minute again put all those pieces to one side they can make up to make a nice new color so we've started to get our triangle here but we want to change the shape because we're very square on the bottom and i want it to be slightly more upwards so all we're going to do is we're going to chop as centrally as we can and as straight as we can down this middle piece don't worry if your two sides aren't even it actually gives quite a nice um, pattern when we're doing the other um, putting it all together but if you turn them so that they've got the long sides together make sure you try and match the black lines both top and bottom and that then gives us a nicer shape we've still got our nice sides we're going to create a triangle with and what we're going to do now is we are going to take our black clay put this on sideways down just to measure yourself a piece that's long enough and we'll do a, what's white the right width rather we'll do a couple of those and we're going to chop one in half put the two halves together and we want it to be enough to overlap but to go over all of that If it's slightly too wide just chop it off turn it on its side and we now want to chop the black off but following the angle of the side that we've done there so with your blade just hold it up against the side 
and gently go down to chop it off at the right angle and repeat on the other side. If you start going down like I did there, stop, pull away. And just change the angle of your blade. And then we're going to do exactly the same with two pieces. So doubled up and these are going to sit on the top. So if you level it up with one side first, make it straight and then you can chop off the excess. And then exactly the same again. Keep it in line with the angle that you're going. And chop off both of those. So that's the base of our cane, but we're going to add a little bit. We need to make it triangular on the top here. So we're going to take this excess piece and with your needle like that, we're going to press down to create a groove in the middle. Then we're going to take a little bit of the black clay, roll it into a thin sausage, just the right size to fit in there. Just pop that in, take off the excess, and then we're going to create a point at the top here. So just pull this bit up to create more of a point. And then chopping off one side, neat. So you've got the right height, fit him in there, cut off any excess. Now, like mine, you'll find it probably sticks out a bit much. That's fine, just with your fingers, press it in, top and bottom, to make it into more of a triangular point. Because we're going to change the shape of this in a minute. So we're just doing our roughly triangular bit. So that's the top done. But now we want to add a little bit, because you should have a slight curve where this goes up in points. You can always emphasise it slightly if yours isn't pointing enough. And in order to cut, create a flat bottom, we've got a little triangle piece in here and a little triangle piece in here. And this is where those other colours that we're going to use to create the circuits and the lines down our piece are going to come in handy. So I'll put this to one side and we'll go back to those colours. So here we have our other colours. So I've got the white and the peppermint, the emerald and the white. I so say we're going to do a Skinner blend through both of these. So I'll start with this one. And because we've only got the two colours, they're both going to be diagonal cuts. And then put them together with the diagonal in the middle. So you've got the large part of the triangle at one side and the large part of the triangle on the opposite side. As before, a little bit of a roll. Fold in half. Press down at the fold. And I'm going to put again this one back on setting thicker, so setting number two, and put it through fold top to bottom each time it goes through till I've got a nice blend from one side to the other. So once that's done, again we want roughly the same width as before, so this time I'm only going to chop it into two pieces, because we haven't got as much clay, so we've got a smaller Skinner blend. Same as before, pinch it, put it through dark side first on the same setting that we're working on, so setting number two. And having done that, I'm going to put it down to my thinnest usable setting to get a longer, thinner strip of clay. I'm going to do the same sort of size as before, so again about two, two and a half inches, or as we saw, slightly more than that, probably more like two and three quarters, um, but whatever feels comfortable to you. You can always roll it slightly longer if you need to. And if you weren't wanting to do the Skinner blend, then you could just take the two colours, the peppermint and the white, and create nice um, oblongs in both of these and just stack one on top of each other. So you end up about that size. So it's about two and three quarter inches by about two. So again, probably about seven and a half, um, seven centimetres, seven and a half centimetres by about five centimetres. Having done that one, I'm going to repeat and do exactly the same with the green. It comes down to the same size. And I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So I have my two blends. As you can see, one is bigger than the other and that's fine. 
it doesn't matter if they're slightly bigger it's just roughly the same size and I've also put the rest of the black back into um, a lump and re-put it through on setting number three of my pasta machine so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little of each of these off to create one little pattern that goes on the bottom of there and one little pattern that goes on the bottom there so I'm just going to take probably about a third of each of these and I'm going to take the messier bits so the bits where the, the white hasn't gone completely over and leave the nicer bits for when we do our stripes through that in a minute so each of these I'm going to lay on the black clay so that it has a bottom of the black and I'm just chopping down and around And then as we did before, I'm going to create a groove in the middle because these are much longer triangles. This was quite a short triangle. These ones are long ones. So it doesn't matter that we've got the longer bits there. I'm going to create a sausage. It'll lie down through the middle of those, the same as we did for this piece at the top here. Just something that's roughly the right size and then because we've got a longer area here if I put the black in just there there'll be a little bit of black there and nothing here I'm just going to create a little bit of extra black that's going to sit on either side so just chop off enough to go down one side oh, that was lucky just enough to fit around that side as well and then I can take those and fold them over and because I want the chopped pieces here to be able to match with the pieces in the other slices as we go this is going to be my point that sits in the middle and this is going to be the bit that flares out slightly so I'm just going to pinch down and flatten it slightly with my finger because this wants to be the right height at least to go and sit there which it is so that's handy if it's not wide enough here which I think is a little bit too short I'm just going to pull this wider with my fingers and then I will chop off one end just slightly to neaten it off so that that can now sit neatly on that side so the first thing to do as before is to chop any excess off down like that and then the next thing as we've done before is with our blade to follow the line of the side of our cane and then I'm going to repeat exactly the same on this side And lastly, if you have or you find that where these two meet you've got a bit of a groove, you can just take a little bit of excess black, put it into a roll, make a point with your fingers, press it down to a slight triangle and just fit that in either side and just chop or pull off any excess. So that's essentially the cane finished up to this point but it's not quite the right shape at the moment I wanted more of an equilateral triangle so more sort of that sort of shape so I'm going to do that by simply pressing down with my fingers so what I'm doing is I'm pressing it down to create more of an equilateral shape where this side is quite thin on this side I need this point to be more in the middle so when it's on this way I'm going to pull this over in this direction and then do the reverse when it's over in this direction. You'll find that the, the top points are a lot smaller than the middle bits as we create this so I'm going to pull these and down the side slightly wider as we go if you've got any cane caps, cane savers feel free to use those they are great um, pieces you can just put on the tops or the bottoms of the canes as you go and they stop any distortion so they'll stop this middle part for instance um, sinking in whilst we're reducing this but what I'm going to do because we're not going to reduce it much before we put those lines in so if I find it is sinking in then I will 
lay it flat on my tile and physically push just the middle of the cane downwards. Turn over and do the same on the reverse. And you find that should minimise the sinkage into the middle. And we'll just keep working on this till we've got a nice shape, much more in the way of an equilateral triangle. I am keeping a rough eye as well on these lines as I go, trying to make sure they're not getting too distorted. Um, I know I'll have distortion on either end, so really I'm looking at this middle section, um, and that's fine. And what we're going to do, we're going to reduce this down, keep doing this, until we get to a size that's pretty close to the finished size we want for the whole cane. What I found is, if you get it nearer to the size you're working on before you put those um, lines in, the straighter obviously they stay, because the less reduction you have to do. If you don't want to do that, you can put them in at any stage you want. I've found from experience, I don't want to get this longer, and by this I mean the bit that's the usable cane, so I will take off some of the reduction or the wastage on either end. You don't want to get the usable bit any longer than about three inches or seven and a half centimetres, because if it gets longer than that, then it becomes difficult to put the, the lines in straight all the way down the length of the cane. But we'll just keep on going. So I'm just gently pressing in as we go along. Sometimes you can just literally pull it straight as well. Let's see how we're doing size-wise. So I'm more or less down to the size I want to be before I put the stripes in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend a little bit of time concentrating that each of these edges are roughly the same size, so that's when it's handy to use the measuring sheet. So that one's one and a half, more or less inches, and I'll just get that down to about one and a half. That's about the same. And that's about the same. So we are about there. So I'll turn it up so it's on its top, with the top of the cane showing upwards, and I will chop off side so I'm going to put it down because I know I've got at least that much wastage on either end so chop it off and see what the pattern is you've got and I can see there I'll need to take off more than that and the same on that end so I'm chopping it down till I see all of those slices all those layers nicely so that's that's what I'm wanting to see all four of those layers plus the black on the bottom and I'll do that till I've got it nicely on either end still got a little bit of distortion here but that's fine because I know I'm still going to get a little bit when I reduce either end so those bits are all going to go they will go into my scrap pile and they'll probably make a good underbase if we're going to veneer some pieces on top later so we have got left our cane I'm just going to straighten that up a bit because it's thinner one side than it is the other so I'm just going to pull that slightly longer I want it as even as I can get it there we go so what we're going to do now is now we're going to start putting the slices in to create the pattern and our circuits. So go back to our blends we've got. We're going to chop in half and put them together so that the darker colour is on the inside. And now we're going to start rolling. So roll over the top, but remember to also roll over the bottom. And what we're trying to do is make this wide enough that it'll fit wherever we're going to chop down through the cane. And by white enough, I mean so that the white is going to be on either side of our slice. So if we slice down something like that, and what I normally will do is that's the blue side, so I will normally take it down towards the blue side. And once we know, and once we know it's the right size, I'm just going to pinch one end. 
and I'm going to put it through the pasta machine on the thickest setting. So setting number naught on my setting to get myself a nice even strip. If you didn't want to do that, you can just roll it by hand. The thicker this strip is, the more distortion you will get when you try and put the two sides together. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So for me, I say setting number naught is a good size. And if you look there, it's probably about an eighth of an inch. Um, so about three in thickness. So having done that, we now need to create a channel or a space for it to fit through. So decide where you want this one to be. So I'm going to put this one, I'm going to put it from where that meets the yellow meets the black here and we'll put it part the way through our line down there. Now on this side when I chop down through it's quite easy because I've got this to guide me. On this side I've got a purely black line or purely black side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where it goes through there so it was part way through the blue there so it'll be part way through the blue there and having cut so it's difficult to see on the black but having cut there and I can now see the line there. If I pull down straight, that will give me a cutting guide. So hopefully you can see that um, on the video. So now I'm going to put the cane so I can see the line for my cutting guide and I can see the line which I'm going to chop through here. And putting my blade on in line with those lines and looking over the top to make sure that the blade is completely flat, I'm very gently going to seesaw down and take your time with this, looking either side as I go to make sure that my blade is going neatly through the cane in the same place all the way down. I'm then going to take my smaller side and place it on top of the cane of the blend. I'm going to chop slightly wide on either side but the right height so that we can pick that up, put that on there and we can fit these two back together. So this is what I mean about the distortion depending on the thickness of your cane. Because we, it's not too thick those lines are still matching up not too badly and this side isn't too much wider than this side. Can you see there is now a difference between those two sides and the same here. Check the other side, make sure it's lined up nicely that side too. And now, particularly seeing as we had that practice earlier, we can go back and we can chop off straight down this cane nice and even with the sides of the cane. Do it on the bigger bit so where it overlaps so you're not digging into the smaller bit. And there will be a slight overlap. So you see there's, don't worry about that, that's absolutely fine. And when we reduce this cane more, A, it won't notice, and B, it will give a very slight curve to where this fits in, which gives a nice way for the canes to join together to create that circuit feel. Having done that, we're going to do exactly the same with this one. So as before, chop down, put the two sides together, roll it, top and bottom till it's wide enough for where we're going to chop through. And this one will go slightly lower down here but across to this side so that should be wide enough. And then as before, pinch along the top and I'm going to put it through setting naught. So for this one I'm going to go through that setting, so it's the second one up, but we'll go there and then again we'll go halfway through the green for that one. So if we're going halfway through there, we'll go halfway through here. So again, I can use the blade to give myself a mark line down that side, which will be a visual guide. And on this side, I can see where I'm going to go through to here because I've got the line to follow down here. And exactly the same, take your time, slow zigzag as you go through to create a place where that line's going to go. Take the smaller piece, put it up on your line, chop, top and bottom right height, 
leave excess either side. And put it back on. And on this one, in particular, put it back on to make sure that your previous line matches up. Don't worry so much about the black lines and the underneath pattern here. It's the blue line that needs to match up, particularly when you're putting this second one on, because that will look completely wrong when we put the whole cane together if these lines don't look as though they're actually completely connecting. So, as before, chop off the excess. And that is our completed cane. So all we've got to do now is reduce this down to the size that we want. I'll start off the measuring sheet and then I'll bring it back on the measuring sheet. And I'm going to do mine until it's probably just over an inch wide. Because I'm then going to chop mine into two. Purely so that I can show you the different patterns you can get if you then put this together in another way. So I will carry on, do the reducing exactly the same way as we did before, but speed it up so you don't have to watch it in slow motion and bring you back when we're at the stage where we can start chopping down through this and see the pattern we're going to get. Okay, so I've got mine down to about three quarters of an inch or about two centimetres um, in width across each of the sides. So a nice equilateral triangle and I've made sure it's exactly the same, so as neat as I can get it. And I've only used half, so I've still got half the cane. So if you wanted to do a bigger size, then obviously please do. I've done that because I need to get about 68 slices out of this if I can to show you the pattern on a nice big um, hexagon, but also the individual little hexagons that it makes as well. So best practice of course you should leave it to rest but you know me by now I'm not particularly good at patience so I'm going to chop off the end so we see the pattern we've got coming through and then I will start chopping my slices so the first thing I'm going to do is chop 24 slices now I'm going to chop mine very thin because I'm going to put them on a scrap clay sheet and this is just going to be a veneer on top. Obviously if you wanted to have the pattern both sides then chop them thicker and it's completely up to you what size you chop them. I always chop looking straight over the top which makes it very difficult to do on camera because my head gets in the way so I'll just chop a couple of slices and then I'll put the camera, turn the camera off, chop all the rest and bring you back when I start to bring them together. So I've chopped off 24 slices to start with. I've got a piece of scrap clay. This is actually the ends, all the um, uneven ends we chopped off when we created this cane. And I was putting them together to create this nice sort of deep brown chocolatey colour. And I've got myself a big enough sheet on a thin setting. So this went through on setting number seven. And I've put it on an excess measuring sheet because I like to work on these because then I can bend and fold them when I'm placing the slices on and it makes it easier. I've also rolled it flat to make sure there's no bubbles underneath. If you do get any bubbles, just pop them with the um, tip of your craft knife or a needle or something because you don't want to be laying these, trying to lay them flat on something that's got some air trapped inside. So all we're going to do is we're going to take... I take three pieces at a time and I'm just going to put them together so they match and it's quite easy to do because we've got those different coloured corners and what I'm concentrating on is making sure again that where these lines go in they match. So what I'm doing is quite fiddly because I've cut these slices so thin because I need so many of them. Hopefully your slices will be thicker so it'll be easier for you to pick them up and manoeuvre them. But same again. And then when I've got the three slices joined with the blunt side of my blade, keeping my fingers well away from the sharp side, I just use that just to flatten out the sides, just to make it easier for when I join all my pieces together. So the first three go in right slap bang in the middle. And then I'll do the next three to join on, making sure that when I start, 
I've got this first one the right way up so that will join in like that. So I now know that the other two are going to go next to it this way. Again, putting it down. And each time I do three slices, I will always do that little bit where I neaten them off to make it easier than folding that up. I can put that together to put my six slices in place. When I'm doing a hexagon, as soon as I've got the outside piece done, again with that blunt side, I will just neaten up any edges so that it makes it easier to join the next three slices on. So our next three slices, so that's the green side, that's the blue side. So I know if I put the green side there, then I'm going to add one piece on here and one piece on here to make my next three pieces. So again, always making sure that I've got those pieces nicely joined together. So we can create those circuits where the patterns run from one to the other. So those three will now join on the outside of that one. And when I'm putting, again, putting a hexagon together, I know that that's the flat line, so that this needs to be in line with that. And this one should actually be further out like that, because that needs to be in line like that. So you can make sure that you're putting these pieces on at the right angle as you put them together to save you time later on when we're putting all the pieces together. And again, I will just flatten up those edges. So I will continue to put the other pieces on around the side as we build the pattern up and I'll speed that up for you slightly as we go. The last bits are always the trickiest to fit together, but just take your time. So hopefully you've seen that I'll take the craft knife, just lay it under whichever slice I'm doing, just to help manoeuvre it in place if it looks like it's not fitting exactly. Once I've got all the pieces in place around the outside, again, as we did before, because we've got our pattern hexagon finished, I will with the blunt side, keeping it sharp side right away from my fingers, just go around just to neaten that up into straight lines. And then because I want to go bigger again to show you the pattern even more before we start to um, neaten up where all these joins are, I'm going to chop myself another 30 slices. And this time we'll put another one, two, three round to create these hexagons all the way around the side. And that leaves a gap for two extra slices to go in the middle. So again, I'll fast forward through that as I'm adding it on, but I'll do exactly the same. I use my little craft knife to maneuver pieces into place if I want to. And if like this piece, one piece is just cut too thin, because I've got enough, I will just probably put that to one side and just carry on cutting myself um, slices. But if you've got a piece that's particularly different in size, try not to add it into the middle of the piece. Leave it to one of the outside pieces because it's less noticeable if you put on the outside a particularly thin or a particularly thin, thick piece. So I will get the next slices cut and start putting all that together for you so you can see the pattern coming out in the hole with the whole 54 slices put together in a hexagon.
There we go, that's the pattern completed with all the um, slices added together. And what we've got to do now is we've got to join up. Any places where there's gaps. So for instance, if you can see here, there's a gap. All I'm going to do is very gently, with the flat part, not the point, just sort of shy of the point, just roll the slices and persuade them to join together. Always turn the sheet round as you work, so that you're having, getting best, best access. And I will gently go over every single slice, making sure that the joins are nice and smooth. I roll towards a point. If when you get to the point there's a tiny little bobble of raised clay, take your tissue blade, get quite a nice curve on it, this is one of the flexible blades, and just where the curve is at its lowest, just shear off any bobbles that are raised up. So I will go around and I will do that around the whole piece and then when we've got all that done I'll bring you back for the last bit of smoothing down to get our veneer completely ready. So I haven't gone over every join, I've sort of joined all those up, I've chopped away any of the little bits that stuck up where it had um, become distorted at the centre points and now just to give it a nice final smooth, I'm going to take some of the wax paper and either with the stainless steel soap or with the edge, just using your roller flat, in small circular motions, I'm just going to go over the whole thing, flattening it out and making sure I end up with a nice level sheet. Once you've done all your circular motions, you can go over in straight lines turn around and do the same in different directions and then finally with the paper still in place I will just give a roll from each side just to make sure it's as flat and even as I can get it. You can then take the sheet off. If you're not sure, pull the sheet off partially and have a look. If you see any gaps, then you can put the sheet back down and you're not going to get it distorted. Once you've pulled it off, don't be tempted to put this sheet back down because you'll be surprised how much clay, even though it looks as though there isn't any, if you put it down in a different place, then you'll get little specks of clay going onto your veneer. So pull the whole thing off. And then I'm just going to, for the last time, straighten up along each side and then cut away the excess scrap clay. So as you saw, I got it off by just moving the knife or the polymer clay blade very carefully under it. It does sort of tend to push the sides up slightly so you've got that slight curve. So very gently just go around, pull the sides longer until your piece is completely flat. And there you go. There is the circuit cane in polymer clay. And here are the three little individual hexagons if you just take six slices. However, I have of course got half my cane left. And if we want to, we can mix this up and by reducing this down and cutting it in half and doubling it up, we can create a different configuration. I'll start with being the same sort of pattern, so having this one still in the middle. And what I'm going to do, rather than just cutting it straight in half and putting the two pieces together, which will give me a diamond shape, I'm going to narrow this bottom bit so that when I put the two pieces together I'll get less distortion when I'm changing the shape. So just press it in at the bottom to make it taller and narrower. You can also if you want to press down that way and press down that way. 
pull the top slightly wider. And when you're at a stage that you think you've got enough, so it's like probably about two and a half inches, if you chop down through, you can then put the two pieces together. So I'll put them together that way. And try and marry up the bottom edges as well. If you marry again, concentrate on those lines to make the circuits. Pull that slightly out. And I can now flatten off this bottom piece simply by holding onto the two top pieces and pressing the bottom flatter. And we're now back to a triangular cane that I will continue to reduce down until I get my equilateral triangle. And I will do exactly the same with this one. Cut 54 slices, arrange them on a veneer to show you what it looks like in the hexagon, and then again chuck cut another 18 slices to make the three smaller hexagons so you can see how it looks when we're doing this pattern. And that's how that pattern comes out. And there's your three little hexagons. And there's the three original hexagons and the two side by side for comparison. I think I prefer, if I was doing a pendant, I think I prefer it in the smaller patterns because you have more sort of complete patterns. In the bigger veneer, I actually like both equally. Just purely depends what you're trying to do. So here are a couple of other colour options for you. So for this one, for the greens here, I used mint, apple green, tropical green and emerald green with black as normal around the background. And then for the two little bits, the two um, circuits, I used cherry red and tangerine with the white around the outside. And in this one, I used aqua, peppermint, brilliant blue and calypso blue, again with black around the outside. And for the two... Um, circuit lines I did raspberry and plum. As always just experiment, try other colour options, try other ways of putting the cane together and see what comes out. So there we go, that was the circuit cane in polymer clay. I think it gives quite a nice effect, it's sort of that sort of 3D where the, the circuits sort of jump off the page a bit with the background behind. Obviously you can do it less detailed if you want to or change it up a bit. Just experiment, enjoy and have fun. Well I hope you enjoyed that one. As always thank you so much for watching and a particular thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. So I think that's it for now. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>